All right, guys, so we're back at it with the Dodge Ram today. And uh, the plan for today is to figure out why the left front headlamp is out, the right front high beam is out, and why three out of the four directionals are inoperative. So you can see we have the lamp out warning light on the dash, left directionals, none of the left directionals work. We have fast flash on the right directional as well. And the only directional that works on this truck is the right rear. Other than that, the rest of them are inoperative. Um, and I, I've already done some circuit testing on this uh, the other day. Uh, we checked the circuitry in the left front headlamp and we actually found a bad, a bad connection where the, the plow adapter was put in. Um, we fixed that, but the fault still remains. So we have to dig a little bit deeper and that's where we are now. So I've run fault codes on it out of the, um, the front control module and we have a bunch of, of circuit uh, low codes. You know, left front marker lamp circuit low, left rear directional circuit low. And a circuit low code is gonna set when the front control module is looking for power. So say you command that circuit on, the front control module should be powering that circuit. The sense line is looking for power and it doesn't see it, it sees a low signal. So that's indicative of lack of, of power to a circuit. Um, and these vehicles, uh, this is still, this is a pretty early model, this is a 2004. Uh, so these ones use a front control module with an integrated power module attached to it. So the integrated power module is the fuse block, the front control module bolts to it, and that's what controls most of the lighting and horns and uh, wiper functions. Um, and what will happen is, uh, just for, for diagnostic purposes, you know, if, if you wind up getting your hands on one of these vehicles, or anything newer than this, pretty much all newer cars do this, um, if it sees a circuit fault um, on a lighting circuit or any kind of an output, typically um, the computer will shut that circuit off. And um, you know that will affect your diagnostics. So if you unplug a circuit and you go to check for power where you think there should be power and you command it, you may not see power. And it's not because there's an open circuit or because the modules failed, it's because the, um, the computer shut that circuit off to protect itself. Um, so anyways, like I said, I ran codes and we get a whole bunch of codes for a circuit low. You know, you can see right here. Oh, it doesn't have brake lights as well. Um, but you can see here we have a left uh, stop lamp circuit low. But the code I wanted to show you guys was battery two voltage open, um, which makes me a little suspicious of possibly a, a uh, power feed issue to the front control module, not necessarily a front control module failure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access the front control module and we are gonna check battery feed one and battery feed two, as well as the ground circuits. Uh, and make sure there's no voltage drops on those circuits before we go ahead and condemn the front control module. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna access the module and then we'll do some circuit testing. I also wanted to mention that I've added a, uh, a microphone, um, just like a lapel, like, like, call it like a lavalier mic. Um, so let me know what you guys think of the audio. You know, I, it's, it's tough shooting, especially like right now I'm outside or in like shop environments. Um, so I really think this is gonna definitely help uh, with the audio issues I've been having with, you know, the audio gets loud, it gets quiet. Um, so I really think that this is gonna definitely help with that situation, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if it sounds better, worse, the same. And uh, I'm gonna keep trying to improve it as we go along. So this is the front control module here. It mounts right to the front of the integrated power module. Um, on later years, they've integrated this into the power module and they call it a TIPM or a totally integrated power module. So we're gonna go ahead. Isaac just showed up. What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the front control module off. As you can see, I've had it off before. Um, it's actually the other day when I was doing some circuit testing and I had to actually just cut two of these mounting screws off because they were just rotted on there so bad. So I'll take these off, remove this, and we will do some uh, power and ground testing. Okay, so we got the front control module off and the terminals look pretty clean, which is good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some quick voltage testing. Um, and if you look at the front of the control module, I don't know if you can see it in there, get in the light. There we go, the pins are labeled. So that top left pin is pin one, top right is pin nine. So pins three and four are power feed one, and pins six and seven are power feed two. So 
we're on pin three right here and we just front probed in there and we'll take our power probe and we have uh, 12.15 volts so that's source voltage so that's good so we'll move over to pin four 12.15 five six so we're gonna need six this is gonna be battery voltage battery feed two 11.9 so we're a little low but nothing to worry about and pin seven same 11.9 now this is a situation where you really can't back probe the circuit and the best way to test voltage especially on a circuit that carries current is to back probe it and to do a voltage drop test because you want to see how the circuit reacts um, under a load because that's how it operates it doesn't operate open circuit like it is right now so let's go back and look at this circuit again this is battery feed one again we have 12.6 and like if, if you've seen the video that we did on the um, the BMW uh, liftgate motor you've seen this before this is just an incandescent bulb put in line with the power probe tip and if we ground this so we're gonna apply ground so we're gonna have power coming to the tip to the bulb and we're gonna apply ground from the probe end it'll light that bulb that tells us I mean this bulb probably doesn't carry a lot of current uh, I'll have to measure it and see and I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the in the comments here um, but that at least tells me that this this circuit can carry some current um, so we'll do that on the next one. And we can light it. So now we'll go to circuit two. Now these are the circuit, this is the circuit that set the fault code. So we'll go to circuit two. We have 11 volts. But it will not light the bulb. So that tells me that we have high resistance in this circuit. We have enough getting through to show us voltage you know close to source voltage is only you know two tenths of a volt off from source voltage um, so we're seeing source voltage but it can't do any work it can't carry any current so this is kind of your your option um, when you in a scenario that you can't do a volt drop test but you need to verify that the circuit can carry some load so let's take a look at the diagram and see what fuse feeds pins six and seven well, let's check pin seven just to be sure we're not just dealing with pin six. So we'll go to pin seven. Same thing. So we have no, we have voltage, but we don't have the ability to carry current. So we have um, some sort of a voltage drop going on here. So let's take a look at a diagram and see which fuse feeds pins six and seven. Okay, so according to the diagram, uh, fuse 11, which is this missing one here, I just pulled it out for testing. Uh, it's a 30 amp fuse is the fuse that feeds pins six and seven on the front of the front control module so what i want to do is i want to make sure that we have good feed to the fuse so we'll go ahead and check the feed side of the fuse and we have you know 12.1 12.2 volts and we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing we did on the front side of the control module and we will ground it and it has the ability to light the light so basically that tells us that the fault is inside the integrated power module. So what I want to do now is go ahead and take it out of the truck. We'll bring it inside, open it up, and see if we can't fix this thing. So we got this thing out of the truck for kind of closer inspection. And first thing I noticed is there's definitely some, some green kind of oozing out of the bottom side of this thing. And I believe the whole bottom of this is a circuit board. So... Um, not gonna not looking too promising so far but the only way to tell is let's tear this thing apart and see if we can't get inside and see what's going on so i'm just going to go ahead and pull all the fuses out i already took a picture of it so i know where everything goes um so i'm gonna go ahead pull all the fuses all the relays and we'll see if we can't get inside of it all right all the fuses are out so now I gotta see if we can find a way to break into this thing without actually breaking it. Okay, so after a good five minutes of cussing and prying, uh, I think I found the 
the problem. <laughs> um, these right here are heat stakes. This one, this one. So there's a total of three of them, it looks like. One, two, three heat stakes, um, which attach this to the bottom side of the case. And like this is the back side of one of them right here. There must be like a little pedestal going up that they melted on the top side. So I'm going to grab a drill bit and I'm going to drill those out. So it seems like the old 316 bits all you really need. And um, you're not trying to drill through to the bottom side of the table. You're just literally going to touch the top of the heat stake. And just pop it off. I have a sneaking suspicion that this guy has something to do with why my headlights don't work. Get out of there, buddy. Get out. Um, so for those playing along at home, like I said, you have three heat stakes that you need to take off. There's actually a clip right here on the end of the uh, main battery feed lug. So that just clips onto this right here. And then you just have one, two clips on the long side. Then you have a clip here, one here, one here, and then two on the end. And you can grab it right by the connector that goes to the front control module and just pry the whole thing right up out of there. And it comes apart like that. I see a little bit of corrosion come up through some vias here. Nothing glaringly obvious besides this right here. But let's um, see if we can take this off and look at the other side. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's... <laughs> We got some layers here. Okay, so we got layers stacked upon layers. Cool. This may be more work than it's worth. Oh, you know what? That might just connect onto there. Let me see if I can figure how this comes apart. Hang tight. Okay, so false alarm. Uh, we got it separated. Like most things, that was actually just way more complicated than, uh, sorry, way less complicated than it really looked. Um, you just had a couple of connectors right here and right here um, that connected to this giant multi-layered thing. Um, so I did a little looking off camera and I found the problem. So pin 11, uh, sorry, fuse 11, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. This one right here, this is gonna be fuse 11. That is gonna transfer over to these three pins. So this is fuse 11, this is fuse 13. These are the two fuses that feed the front control module. Um, they connect to these two uh, connectors on the board. So this is the connector for, sorry, this is the connector for fuse 13. This is the one for fuse 11, which is the one we're having trouble with. And as you can see, power is going to come in here, go across here, which this piece is missing. That's our point of failure right there. That just corroded out. Um, so let me get a little pointer. So the intended path is power should come in here from the fuse into these three terminals from the fuse, go across the board. Um, across here and obviously this section of the board is missing it's just full of corrosion so it was probably just bleeding enough voltage across this corrosion to show us that we had voltage um, on our power probe and then obviously when we did try to load the circuit it just couldn't carry it across that gap um, but so it comes down there comes across here to this uh, row of vias right here which brings it to right here, which this is pin six, and then this is pin seven um, out to the front control module. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to fix this section right here. All right, so I think the game plan is gonna be to use some of this um, 18 gauge copper wire to just kind of jump out that section right there. And it should be low profile enough, and maybe if it's close to any other wires in there or any other circuitry in there, when it's all said and done, I may just put some kind of a protective coating over it um, just to prevent it from, from shorting. But, I mean, it should all be pretty stable. 
it shouldn't wiggle around or anything. It's a pretty short run. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this up a little bit, scrape off some solder mask, and get ready to fix this. So I've changed angles here just because I'm right-handed and it's easier to solder this way. Um, I've gone ahead and just laid down some flux and I'm going to go ahead and tin this. Alright, now All right, so we've just tacked that down right there. And just being careful not to, geez, that's out of frame. Sorry about that. So I've tacked that down right there, um, being careful not to short it to that connector. And now I'll just bend it around, tack it down there, and then we'll final solder everything and make sure everything clears and put a little um, protective coating on it and put it back in the truck. So that's the final repair and we'll go ahead and just put a protective coating over it. It looks like the solder is a little balled up right there but it's actually um, right up against the solder mask um, but we do have a good joint there um, and obviously a good joint down there. So I'm just going to put a little protective coating on that and we will put it back together and put it in the truck. Okay we got the fuse box installed. We no longer have the um, Lamp out message illuminated. We have nice, slow, proper flash on the turn signals. And let's go check out our headlights. Marker lamp's lit, headlamp is lit. Awesome. So I'll just go around and make sure all the rest of the lights work, but it uh, looks like we got this one fixed. You know, so at the end of the day, um, fixing that module instead of replacing it definitely saved me a couple bucks it cost me a couple hours which you know time definitely isn't free you always want to keep that in mind um, but like I said if, if if I was keeping this truck or if this was a customer's vehicle I would probably have replaced that module um, but I mean that's not to say that, that repair is not gonna last 10 years you know but ultimately this truck you know its time is very limited the quarter panels both look like this there's big rod holes in them you know the undercarriage is not much better so this truck's days are limited. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. Um, I hope the video was helpful to someone. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. You know, I tried to focus more on the diagnostic portion of this one than the actual repair um, because nine times out of ten, you're just going to be putting a new fuse block in it. But I did want to focus on the fact that, you know, you need to be able to, you need to volt drop test circuits and you need to be able to load test circuits to make sure that they can carry current because if you just base this repair or this diagnosis off of our voltage readings, well then we would have put a new front control module in it and that wouldn't have fixed the truck. You know, and comment below and let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. Um, I have a few things in, in mind. You know, I want to keep doing some more case study stuff as, as things come along, but also I want to do some more um, theory based and maybe um, series of videos. So possibly looking into doing um, like a network diagnostic uh, series, a J2534 programming series, or maybe just like a programming series in general. 
Um, and I and I think I want to do some stuff on ADAS, um, some some advanced driver assistance, um, you know, with calibrations and diagnostics and issues you might come across um, with ADAS stuff because it's it's coming and it's coming fast. You know, I see a lot of this stuff in body shops right now and glass shops, and it's just it, it's going to hit us hard. You know, even with just regular alignments um, we're going to be running into having to do ADAS calibrations. So let me know down below what you guys want to see. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, it, it definitely motivates me and keeps me going. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.